We had now learned that the rice man was an official from the government seed rice loan scheme and that about 20 Puala farmers had taken the loan, agreeing to pay back the seed rice from their harvest. Four had defaulted. The first one we found, Bessie, a serious and hard-working man, took it seriously. He explained that his father-in-law had also borrowed, but had been unable to repay. By Mende rules, Bessie was responsible. He had paid back his father-in-law's debt and was now almost able to cover his own. The next defaulter, Selu, a greedy owed rice, said he would pay it back, but laughed as he said it. Third, Abdu, husband of Fati, who we had talked to about bedbugs and Mende food in the clearing. Abdu's reasons for default were arresting. His entire rice crop had failed, not due to natural causes, he said, but as an omen. Someone would die, in this case his aunt. And though he didn't deny taking the rice, he felt the victim of higher forces and lacked enthusiasm for repayment. Fourth and largest culprit, Joe Brimer, had left the village some time before our arrival, guilty of unspecified misbehaviour. It seemed he had a track record of default, and when the rice man had asked if it was worth hanging on for Joe, there had been general laughter. Surprisingly, Joe had come back to the village for our arrival celebration under his performing name of Joe Kai, Joe the Snake. Though once the festivities were over, he had vanished. The rice man's chances didn't look too good. Fatty's husband, Abdu, was pretty uninterested in the subject of rice, but he perked up considerably when Marion asked him for news of Gina, a woman who had also left the village. Gina was the wife of Musa, nicknamed Bad Knight, Abdu's brother, another performer at the welcome celebrations. Nayeni Gina Ali, Yawe Bido, a dealer, Musama, Ye, Tamusa, Musa of Wabido Gigama, Yetiti Kailan, Musa Uliloma, Ali Kailan, Gili Kailahu, Kajina Gamaja, a Kopuwa, Gava, Yetigam Tigia, Tiliagam over Tigame, Mumia, the Arcadian Dag data, Nafuimia Global to figure, Kay Batia. I'm <laughs> Ah, 
We had thought at first that selling Musa to be eaten was a figure of speech. According to him, it was not. But Musa had a second wife, Hawa, to console him after Gina's treachery. Unfortunately, all was not well. The dawn row we had overheard was about Musa and Hawa. <laughs> There was more to it. Musa had decided to take a third wife, a teenage girl, Miata. He was working to help her parents initiate her into Sunday, the women's society. By Mende rules, Musa expected Hawa to welcome a new wife. He expected her to help with the extra work needed to cover the costs. By Mende rules as well, a wife is not supposed to be jealous, not even to know the meaning of the word. <laughs>
pasivo. En la iglesia de una, ya no está guapa, ya no está guapa. Sí. Otia. Otia, bueno. Ya no está guapa. Otia, un 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 guapa. เอ็บวานาวมาบ่บ่มาวางวางยังกับวางวางวันนี้ยิงกับเต้งกูบ่มาพี่ยิงกับเต้งกูเต้งกูคือแม่มาน้องมออีดูเลยเนี่ยกู
But almost as soon as they got into the water, there was a sense of deflation. The women couldn't get amongst the fish and got irritable with the children who had just come along for the splash. The rice man, a kindly soul, saves his old engine oil for the village women who use it on their hair. As for repayment of rice, he has drawn a blank again. Worse, the master farmer has washed his hands of the matter. The threat of withholding rice from the whole village had no apparent effect. I wondered how he felt. He got fed up. I mean, it's actually hard. Especially at this time of the year, when uh, fiel, getting fiel has become a problem to us. The government is only entitled to give us 30 liters a month. That is one liter per day. You must like your job then. Pardon? Do you like mm. your job then? Yeah, I do like it. I mean, passionately, I like the job. Otherwise, I give up. <laughs> Of the four defaulters, only Bessie had paid up. Abdu and Selu still said they would, but not yet. And the main culprit, Joe Brimer, was still missing. We had learnt that his other problem in the village was the non-payment of a hefty fine incurred for deflowering an initiated but as yet unmarried woman. We also learnt that as well as being known as Joe Brimer and Joe Snake, he was also known as Joe Let's Have a Party. We passed messages to him through an intermediary and went looking for him on his farm some way from the village. But like the rice man, we drew a blank. Oh, <laughs> 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 Eh? <laughs> 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 We had remarked the boy Koji, a son of Bokari Carpenter, from the start. He was very active and cheerful, and sometimes came and helped us carry our gear. But it was only now that we learned that Koji, his nickname, was the name of an ominous rock spirit. We passed Koji on the way home. I wanted to talk to him. Marion did not. 
She thought there was a danger of placing undue significance on the accusation. He had been only one amongst several reasons suggested for the poor catch. She also thought it would frighten the boy. I felt it was a remarkable opportunity. All the talk of the supernatural, hearsay and gossip. And here was a small boy, Actual, who they were saying sometimes housed a witch spirit. I also thought that because spirits were commonplace here, we would not frighten him if we took care. Marion and I could not agree, but as only she spoke Mende, we couldn't and didn't talk to him. Nui, Kakiti, Katagi, Baby, Kashi, Hello, my poor one, yeah. My fatty agama, Kamuduana, and a water gear. The mayor, Mohai Peata, Kamuana, Initiation is suspended during Ramadan. Musa told us that he and Miata would marry the moment she was initiated and that they would live together happily ever after in Puala. He had spent so much time and effort, suffered so many dangers and disappointments on the marriage trail. Why did he keep going? <laughs> Nana Pumoyabe, Medemu Miabe, he do a little bo my oko watao he, ala, watao nu vi major, ke efili, watao o he gui. Mumiga, can never me do ita anyango kui. The rice man leaves determined to prosecute Joe the snake. He'll have to find him first. For the rest, he is disappointed but not surprised. And Mende himself, he knows that any loan scheme can only fit Puala imperfectly. In the Mende world, where a whole crop can be hijacked by an omen, life is just too unpredictable. Sylvester and Brahma, like all Mende, have an exceptional knowledge of rice farming. And side by side with the natural world with which they have to deal, they recognize a supernatural one as omnipresent and as mundane. <laughs> The supernatural affects farming and fishing. It comes into family arguments and explains why the palm wine is strong. In Puala, the magical is part of the ordinary. And in Puala, the ordinary can have in it the extraordinary. The deep feeling that Massa felt for her husband, Bokhari, expressed in terms of him providing food. The passion in the voice of Brahma next. He is talking of the deepest love, though he describes the most commonplace. The question, what is a love wife? Yeah, 